last time we animated the first character and today it's time to finish this animation and animate the second character remember that this illustration was provided by drawkid there's a discount available the details are in the description below so stay tuned and let's get this tutorial started <laughs> This is our master composition. Uh, one thing that I'm noticing is that uh, this composition is too, too, too long. Uh, so I'm gonna make sure my marker is then second mark and I'm gonna trim composition to work area. Uh, and then I'm gonna open the female character and let's do some parenting here. Great. So uh, the, the this forearm will be parented to the arm. The arm will be parented to the body. The neck will be parented to the body and I'm gonna hide the neck. I'm gonna also hide the forearm and the arm. So these two, we won't be moving them. I don't need them. This forearm will be parented to the body, back hair, ear, nose, uh, eyes, mouth will be parented to the head. And the only thing that I will be animating here is the eyes. So I'm gonna uh, hide everything else. Uh, then the shoes. So. The shoes and the leg, I'm gonna directly hide them. I won't be parenting them to the body and I won't be rigging them. Then this leg, again, I'm gonna hide it. Uh, this shoe, I'm gonna leave it just cause I will be animating it. Then the flower, the background, same here. I'm gonna hide them um, and I'm gonna parent the head to the body. Now let's click Control K and change the duration of this scene to be 10 seconds. When you're animating two characters, if you animate them both at the same time, the viewers would uh, lose focus. So you can't like have a bunch of actions happening at the same time. We need to make sure you direct the viewer's attention to one character and then you direct the attention to something else. So in our case, if I play this animation, as you can see, so this character, he's doing his thing here. Great. And now here there is a like like there is a pause here. There is nothing going on really. So I think at this time, I would like this character to just move a little bit. As you can see in our original animation, it's the same thing, same things going on. So uh, the male character moves and now then she moves a bit and then he moves again. That way we have this cool uh, dynamic between the characters and this whole illustration looks more, uh, you know, more alive and, uh, with like a certain purpose, not just like, we don't have just random things happening at random timing. We need to make sure uh, they make sense. I would like to start with a little blinking. So uh, I'm adding keyframe for the scale. Then I'll move, I think uh, three frames and I'm gonna make sure this is zero. And this is, uh, no, actually this is five, sorry. And this is 135, I think it's fine. Then I'm gonna go to about the six seconds, the, the sixth frame. Uh, and add keyframe and then to about, uh, let's say nine frames and copy and paste the first one. Okay. Awesome. And then I'm going to just copy and paste these keyframes to the other eye. Now, let me go back to the master composition and I'm going to, okay, great. So this is when her action should start. So she's basically just moving her head, her body and the, uh, like the arm a little bit. However, to do this, we'll need to make some changes on the, the forearm. And the reason why we have to do that is because uh, I want the, his, her hand to move too. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with the other, like the male character. I'm going to create a little mask here. So I think, yeah, like this, um, I'm going to make sure it covers everything like the book too. Great. Uh, and now I'm going to duplicate it. Uh, I'm going to name that hand, I'm going to just uh, click on this icon here. So I invert the mask basically. And now I'm going to do the same thing as I mentioned, as I did with the other character. So I am drawing a circle. I think, well, this is fine. I think it's good. Uh, great. So now make sure the circle is parented to the forearm. And for this arm, we won't be bringing it with Juic because I basically just have, uh, I think, four or five keyframes here. Something I forgot that's super important is to change the anchor point of the forearm to be somewhere around here. Now, let's add rotation keyframes to this little circle and position keyframes too. 
let's easy ease them the body change the anchor point to be here and add a keyframe for your rotation and for the position like you so you can see it so you can see them next change the anchor point of the head to be somewhere around here add a keyframe for the rotation and uh, click you to see the keyframes on the uh, Okay, great. So these are all my keyframes. Now, we are going to do the same thing here for this character. We are going to make sure he leans forward before she leans backward. Um, so uh, change the rotation of the body to be minus three. The head can be uh, minus six. However, I can see that the, yeah, so the neck is above the head here and this is a problem so i'm going to select everything all these layers and move them above the neck great uh, awesome so let me go back now okay great and now i would say to about two seconds seven frames uh make the rotation of the body three uh the rotation of the head can be yeah i think three is fine now let's animate the forearm so i think i think it can be something like this and maybe the position a bit okay great and now just make sure the keyframes for the forearm and for the arm start at the second keyframe of the body and the head great now let's use the keyframe wigman again and easy ease them i think i'm gonna make these a bit slower great and now in our original animation, we have a little um, animation of this foot. So I'm going to change the anchor point here. Great. And I'm going to go to about, I think, uh, two seconds, 21 frames at rotation keyframe. And I just want to make this like go like this and then like this. And then it can be normal. Great. I'm going to fix the keyframes. Um, one thing, just one thing I'm noticing here is that I think this is a bit too extreme. So, yeah, and that can be slower and that can be slower too. Okay, awesome. And I'm going to make her blink here too. Great. I would like to add keyframes. So I, actually, I'm going to just uh, click on the, this little arrow here and hide the, the animation of the eyes. I'm going to add a keyframe for everything. And then at about the five second mark, I'm going to copy and paste the first keyframes of everything because I want to make sure I have a loop. So in our case, this time we won't have additional keyframes because I think the movement is pretty small. So I don't think it needs anticipation or like a follow through action. Uh, so I think this, this should be fine. And actually I'm going to move everything besides, so all these keyframes, besides the keyframes of the shoe, uh, a bit like to be, to happen a bit sooner. Uh, great. So now let's go to our master composition. Great. And this is where the animation ends from. So I'm going to click N. So that's the end of my composition. Awesome. Okay, guys, so we are ready with this animation. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As I mentioned at the start of this video, make sure you check the drawkit.com website. It's super cool. And also you have a 20% discount if you want to buy the annual subscription. Uh, and uh, these very cool illustrations are from there. So uh, for those of you who don't like to draw, but love to animate, but you don't have the resources or you just don't have the vector files, you can uh, take advantage of this cool website, drawkit.com, uh, to download some vectors and then import them into After Effects and start practicing. I really uh, hope you like this tutorial. If so, make sure you like, comment, and share this video. And follow me on Instagram, where I'll be uh, uploading additional reels and shorts. Have a great day, and I'm going to see you very soon.